Uh, welcome to this talk about schema-based security uh, in the NeoFree A4O. Uh, I am Luis. I work at uh, NeoFree uh, as a developer in Cypher and security. And I've been working here since 2017, so a little over two years. Uh, I am uh, from Sweden. Uh, in the city called Linköping, and I also live here in Sweden now, which means it's 10 p.m. for me, this last session. Uh, and I, uh, now, not for feeling, making you feel old, but I was born in early 90s. Uh, I have a background in engineering and mathematics, and I, apart from being a member of neo I am involved in the local uh, uh, organization called Pink Programming for uh, getting more women into the IT business. Uh, so, uh, first, as a reference, uh, for those of you who haven't really used security in neo 4 the thing we had in the free X series was uh, the we also have uh, things like LDAP, for example, and uh, plugins and so on, but the native stuff we had were kind of basic. Uh, it was based on files for users and uh, one other file for the map, mapping between users and roles. Uh, the only roles that existed were uh, very coarse grained roles, built in ones, uh, which were called reader, editor, publisher, architect, and admin. And uh, these were such that, for example, the reader role, either you could read nothing in the database or everything. Uh, there was no way to set up, for example, that you only were able to read notes with a specific label or something like that. And all these uh, different roles and users were only managed via proce procedures. But now, uh, in the upcoming for o release, we have some new stuff for you. So there, we instead have a much more fine-grained schema-based security. Uh, as uh, was mentioned in the keynote, uh, name for A4O will have support for multiple databases. We, in one of these, uh, which you have both in enterprise and community, is a system database where, for now, uh, among other things, the security data is stored instead of having it in files. And kind of what we thought there was, actually, we have a lot of customers that use neo 4 to model security. So why couldn't we ourselves have our security data in a database? Also, I see some people uh, typing questions. So if you have a question, type it in the Q&A channel or the Q&A tab here, and I will try to answer them after the presentation. Uh, so uh, with this new security model, we have uh, much more fine-grained reads, uh, which are, we also split read into different concepts, the concept of access, traverse, and read, which I will come to later. Uh, writes are unfortunately still coarse grain, but we hope in later in the Forex area to have more fine-grained writes. And instead of being uh, managed via uh, procedures, these new things are managed via new administration commands, which you will find very familiar if you use Cypher before. So, uh, first note on how to use this new system database. If you are in browser or desktop or Cypher shell, uh, you just type colon use system before. Uh, for drivers, uh, we currently, right now, it's not sure this will be the status when 4.0 get released, but currently we have support for uh, using multiple database and the system database in the Java, JS, and .NET drivers. And when you create your session, we have a new optional name argument, uh, which, like you can see in this small example, can be for database system, for example, where you pick your database. And uh, it will, uh, and then you will try. So to run any of these new commands, where this grant roll reader is one of them, you will be, a, you will need to start the system, uh, the session towards the system database. If you don't give any such name, uh, the 
driver session will be against your default database, the old near free database. So uh, you could split up these new administration commands in two parts. Uh, one which have to do with users and roles and one which have to do with privileges. So the user and role administration, that's pretty much the free X security model, but with Cypher instead of procedures. So just as in uh, free X, in community, you only have uh, users, no roles. And these old security procedures, we have mapped them over to the system database. So all of them, uh, but one still works, uh, but this one uh, changed password uh have been removed since the new syntax is more secure you will now also be able to uh you to change your own password you now must uh, know your old password which wasn't required before uh, uh but the difference is this old security procedure you must actually run in a session like i showed you on the last slide towards the system database now before you just uh run them in your normal session and for now, uh, yield will not be supported with, together with those. So you will have to do, if you want to do like some post filtering with the old procedures, you need to do that in uh, the language you're typing in, like Java or JavaScript. So uh, here are some examples of the new commands. Uh, I'm going to have like a running example for all this presentation. So uh, for creating a new user, Alice, you just type create user, uh, just as you would do like a normal cipher command, but against the system database, where you write something like create user Alice, set the password to some very secret password. And then uh, you can also, uh, which also is in the FreeX model, you can uh, type out that uh, the user must not change the uh, password on the first login. Uh, the default is that you, the user have to do this. And as we see in the third example with Charlie here, you can also set the status if you are in enterprise and the status is either active, which is default or suspended. So now we have our three users, Alice, Bob and Charlie. And if we somehow made a mistake, we can change them with alter user. So here, Alice, who by default had to change her password. If we do alter user Alice, set password change not required. She doesn't have to do that anymore. You, we can also just change the password and then the, this not change not required or change required flag uh, will uh, be as before. Uh, you can also set multiple of these things in the same command. And the last command here is a bit specific. Uh, so this is actually the command the user use on the first login to change their own password. So as I mentioned, you also have to remember your old password now to change it. So you write alter current user set password from the old one to the new one. And this is the only command uh, which will actually work when you have password change required. So this will kind of lock you up and then you will be able to go in and run all the other commands, run normal cipher. So uh, for roles, if you are on enterprise, uh, you can create roles and drop roles just by typing exactly create role and drop role. So here we create a few different roles, uh, which could be on an hospital. So we have employees, we have the doctor, we have someone who works in the reception of the hospital. We have a researcher who studies uh, different medical things, like trying to find out a specific diagnosis for a specific symptom, for example. And then I, then I by accident, created the role dummy. So then you can drop it with drop role dummy. Uh, to actually then do this mapping between the users and role, you can use grant role. And uh, you can do this like one by one, but also grant multiple roles to multiple users at the same time. So in this case, both Alice, Bob and Charlie are employed by the hospital. 
Alice is a doctor and a researcher. Bob is a receptionist and Charlie is a researcher. And then if Alice would quit her job as a researcher and only focus on her doctor career, we can revoke the old researcher from Alice. So uh, the model we end up in after this is something that looks like this. And this is actually the internal model we have in the system graph. So here you can see that this actually is a very graph -y problem. So we have the free users, which have different roles, which they can share. And it's like you see, it's very easy to like model with the graph. And then of course, like the password and these flags, like suspended and active and so on, are properties on the user nodes. So this is actually how our uh, internal model looks like. Uh, then the actual new thing in 4.0 is that uh, apart from all this, that you now can control the things with the new commands, is that we have more fine-grained security. And each and each of the role have a set of privileges. And uh, in NeoFA 4.0, we have a mix of uh, whitelist and blacklist, or grant and deny. So each role have one whitelist and one blacklist. And if you want to assign something, so you use the revoke command. And uh, for a specific user, like you saw in the last slide, uh, one user like Alice here can have multiple roles. She have both the role doctor and employee, which means she can have multiple whitelists and blacklists since those are knit to roles and not directly to users. And this would mean uh, that when we actually do authorization for a user, we will end up with uh, a bunch of whitelists and a bunch of blacklists. And the actual permission for the user is then a kind of an aggregated permission. So we look in all the whitelists and all the blacklists, and uh, a user is allowed to do an action if it is in at least one of the whitelists and none of the blacklists. So if you have one grant and one deny on the same thing, then the deny will kind of win over the grant, which makes it maybe a bit more secure. So the different kind of privileges we have is uh, access. And this is a totally new thing in 4.0, which means an access to actually do anything on a specific database, even use neo 3 a as a calculator like return one. We have a uh, traverse, which have to do with the structure of the data to see uh, labels and relationship types but also to uh, actually, like the word says, traverse over them. For example, when you do a shortest path. We have read, which is uh, the read of, of properties. For And this can be a kind of fine-grained. You can, I will show you an example, but uh, it can be a specific property for a specific label or L type and uh, for a specific database as well. We have also the command match, which is a shorthand for both traverse and read uh, for ground commands. Uh, apart from this, we also have a bunch of other things which are similar to the things that existed already in FreeX, uh, but a little more, bit more fine-grained, and that is writes, the right to create new tokens, uh, the right to create index or drop indexes and constraints, and also, since we now have multiple databases, we also have specific uh, commands for starting and stopping databases or the privilege to do so. So uh, the access privilege then, uh, that means that you can access the database at all. And uh, here in my commands, uh, you will see that some have the word database and some have graph. And in neo 3 a in uh, right now, we have a bit of a mixture between uh, these two concepts, I think. And that is usually because we only have one graph in one database, so it's a one-to-one -one mapping. And because of that, we are not always very specific what we mean. But maybe in the future, uh, you could think of a model where you have several graphs in one database. 
and then it would maybe make more sense that you have access to a database but that you can read in a specific graph for example so in our example uh, all employees have access to our healthcare database if uh, this user uh, the or your user with the role employee only have access and nothing else uh, if, uh, the user can run queries but it will appear as if the database was empty. Uh, if it try it, so read queries will not give permission denied, but it will look like the database was empty. If they have no access, to it, it, they will get permission denied already on the start of the transaction. However, if uh, someone who have not any write privilege try to write and still have permission denied. So, uh, but to actually do something useful with the database, you would need uh, some more privilege than only access. So to start with our example, uh, we have Alice, who is a doctor. And the doctor should be able to see all the patient data in this example. So here uh, we have a small example graph with three patients, uh, a bunch of symptoms that those patients can have and how symptoms can be a part or a symptom of a specific disease. So Alice, who is a doctor, can see the entire graph. And uh, that we control by granting traverse on the database healthcare to doctor. So that means he can traverse, uh, see the labels of all nodes in this case. Uh, we also have similar things for relationships, but I don't have an example of that in uh, this presentation but it works the same way as with nodes so uh, as you can see here we can either say that uh, alice have traverse rights on all the nodes or on, uh, or on everything actually on both nodes and relationships or uh, and also she have uh, read rights and the star here means uh, everything so uh, the thing in the curly braces is pr different properties that the read command uh, belongs to. And star in this case means all properties that exist now and every other uh, property that maybe will exist ever in the future. So uh, we can see here that the doctor can traverse the entire database uh oh it should actually be graph and not database i think i have mistyped my commands but anyway uh she should also be able to read all the properties or you can write a uh, match which is like i said a shorthand for both traverse and read if we then come to uh the receptionist bob he should not be able to uh, look at diseases and symptoms. Uh, it's enough if a receptionist of the hospital can know about the patients, uh, but he should not be able to know which kind of disease that's not part of his job. So then uh, we say that the receptionist should only get uh, be able to read all the properties of patients' nodes. And uh, since you can see here that we actually use the words notes as a keyword, and then you put the label patient. So in this, for Bob, this graph will look like if only the patient's nodes existed. So even if he tries to return other things, he will get an empty result from the rest.
my video. Hi, Louise. Um, yes. I've lost audio. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, now I can. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Let's see if I'm back. Okay. Hello again to you too. Uh, let's see, I don't know if you missed a little bit on the last slide, but uh, let's start from the uh, top of this slide. So uh, here we have the researcher who's called Charlie and uh, Charlie should be able to uh, do a kind of data scientist job and look at different symptoms and different diseases and maybe uh, see how those connect. And for that, it could be interesting to see the patient's nodes. Uh, but maybe due to GDPR or something else, uh, the end researcher should not be able to see like personal data, like social security numbers or names or anything that can identify the patients. So in this case, uh, the researcher will have be able to traverse everything still, but you see here that he can't read everything. So he can read uh, the node symptoms, every, all the properties and the node's diseases, but he can't read the patient nodes, which means he will see that they are there. He can traverse or find paths over them. He can see the labels, but he can't read any patient data. And this I think can be super useful for many use cases. And you were not able to do this before. Uh, but maybe it's like we have a much bigger graph. This is just a small example graph with other uh, labels as well. Or maybe, like I said before, maybe there will, someone will extend this graph later with other labels. And then uh, Charlie will not be able to see those. And maybe some of the patient data is still relevant because maybe it can help him in his research to know the age of the patient that get a different disease, even if he can't read, for example, their name. So then another approach could be to do something like this, that we say uh, that he can, first we give him a grant match, which means he can traverse and read everything. But then we add a deny. Here we deny that he can't read any names. So here you see that before we only had the star, now we actually have property names or property keys here. So here he won't be able to read any names or social security numbers on uh, the nose patients. And then he will be able to see everything but exactly those two things. So uh, in this case, he can use all data except the things that actually um, actually like, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, like specify or tells who the patients are. So uh, apart from, like I said before, the read and traverse privileges are the ones that are most uh, fine grained right now, as it stands in 4.0. We will continue working on security for uh, more for X releases, I hope. So then it will be more fine grade for rights as well. Uh, like I said, also, I think in these examples, I made a mistake. So uh, all database will actually be graph here, like you can see in this place. So uh, for rights, you just write grant write star. And like I said, you cannot put any properties, unfortunately, here right now. But you can do it on a database level. So you can still say that someone is allowed to write to a specific database, but not another database in case you're using the multi database feature. So here you can imagine that it should be both the doctor and the receptionist should be able to add things to the database, but not the researcher, perhaps. You can all, we also have uh, some new commands for token privileges. There are more, but these are two of them. So here, uh, the doctor are able to create new node labels and property names or add to the schema of the database. 
while uh, the receptionist can just fill in like uh, the kinds of property keys and nodes that are already there. We also have some new commands for indexes and constraints. So we have uh, maybe the researcher should be able to uh, create, create uh, indexes and drop indexes, but not constraints. So this before in FreeX, uh, to be able to uh, use indexes and constraints, you also always had the right privileges. But here is a good example with the researcher where it can make sense that the researcher can uh, create indexes to make the data analysis faster, but still not have the access to write. And also uh, we have split up indexes and constraints before you could, you either had the right to do both or none. And then uh, finally, in case you have some super duper admin who is supposed to be able to do everything, then you can just write grant all the database privilege there is for that user. And that was actually my final slide. So I will now read a bit from the Q&A and in the meantime, you can uh, have your last chance of uh, competing in this Hunger Games. So I have a few questions for you that you can fill in the answer for meanwhile. So let's see if you have some questions. Uh, the first question is if there will be a difference in 4.0 in community versus enterprise, according to rights and roles. And there will be, this is mostly an enterprise feature. The only thing, uh, community will still work uh, pretty much as it did in FreeX, where every user, uh, we have authentication users with passwords, but every user has the rights of an admin and can do everything. So the only change for community is pretty much that you can use these new cipher commands. Then uh, the next question is that, uh, let me see. So we have a question, security and privacy go hand in hand. How do I make my database in the free GDPR compilant by design? Uh, I would uh, guess that you should do this together with someone who are a bit more familiar with GDPR, but I think like the researcher example I had is a good example of how you can do it much better now because you can, for example, deny someone to read all data that should be protected because of GDPR. Uh, let's see what we have more. Then we have, is there a claim based model I think, can we create a session with the collection of claim and those be used in conjunction with roles rather than need to create users and assign roles? I think I'm not really familiar with a claims based model, but uh, right now you will need to do it through roles. We have discussed a bit that you could maybe like assign privilege directly to users, if that is what you mean, uh, but it's not going to work in the current model. Uh, next question is if we have, if any enterprise users have performed the penetration testing and uh, how NeoFreeA has held up. And since we are, we have done some testing, uh, we have, uh, milestone two, it's called now out. There will be a milestone three later, I know, uh, for the NeoFA 4.0. So it's possible to test it out. I know, uh, I think we are kind of right now in the stabilization phase uh, to test the product. And since we are a few months from the actual release, we haven't come that far in testing yet, but it's like ongoing. And uh, the next question is if we can chain multiple labels in read so uh, they can only read where multiple labels are present. So for example, if both the person and the customer are present, 
And I don't think that is anything we support right now. Uh, you can do some combinations together with deny. Uh, but you can't really chain them. You can have, of course, uh, several things for several, what you would say, um, it's more like an OR based model than the end based, we can say. So you can have uh, grants on several labels, but it will be if it have any of them and not if it have all of them. So uh, the next question, let's see what we are on time. We have some time left. So the next question is if the access for my user or role has the effect of partitioning the graph into two or more conceptual subgraphs? Do I get all of the subgraphs being returned? Let me see. So this is like a very interesting question because uh, it's actually work a bit like that. So uh, that what you get back usually is a subgraph. Uh, yeah, you get all the subgraphs back because it's uh, just as today, even if you don't have, if you do much n return n, for example, in uh, uh, current NeoVA database, even if you have subgraphs that isn't connected, you're still going to get back everything. And this will be the same. So uh, you will always get back everything you are able to see. But there could be uh, cases where you, for example, use shortest path. And there is actually a path in the database, but you're not allowed to traverse through that node. And because of this, you will get, like you said, two separate subgraphs. And then the result will be that there are no path in between them, even if such a path actually existed in the database, can, since you can't see all the nodes in the path. Uh, then we have a question about where user objects live and what uh, the integration is with Active Directory. And integration towards Active Directory and LDAP will work just as before. Uh, but the, uh, the difference is that before users used to live in a file, in your file system, while now it actually lives in a real NeoFOIA instance. Uh, like I showed in uh, the picture with the users and the roles. But uh, what will have um, happen pretty much if you use it together with LDAP or Active Directory is that you use, if you want to use it together, you have a grouped role mapping. So you say that your LDAP groups, uh, what you say, uh, So let's see, am I back? Hi Louise, oh we got you, Yes, we got you back. Okay, I think I lost my connection for a moment. So we, we were asking about LDAP and Active Directory and it will work just as today that you have a group to role mapping in the setting which lives in the config file where you can specify that the group you have in Active Directory or LDAP corresponds to a Neo Fourier row. And then you will still have the authentication handled by Active Directory. And the authorization uh, will be handled by our new roles with the privileges. Yes, and then we have a question about if I can explain a bit more uh, what the token is. And the token is something in the FRA, which is a label or a relationship type or a key of a property. I think that is all it can be. Uh, and since uh, NeoFRA doesn't really have a schema, 
uh, where you like specify these things up front. We instead have a token store where uh, every new label, if you add a node with a new label, it will be added to the token store. So if you don't have the right to, to uh, create new tokens, you can only uh, create uh, new nodes with labels that already existed in the graph or with property keys that already existed or the same thing for relationship types. Let's see if we have any other question. And then we have a question, if you have the right to read the node, if we automatically have traverse, or what will happen if you have grant read and also deny traverse, uh, and if the deny traverse will influence the read? So this is a super good question. And you don't have it by default. Uh, usually, for most use cases, I think, if you want read, it also makes sense to first grant traverse. And because if you can't traverse, you can't get the node back. So if you do a match statement and you can't, you don't get any nodes back, uh, then of course you won't be able to, uh, there is no properties to read actually if you can't find the node. So for most use case, you don't have it automatically in, if you don't do the match command. But for most use cases, I think it makes sense to have both traverse and read, like only traverse or both traverse and read together. It's not many, it's not so many use cases today I can come up with on the top of my head that requires read but not traverse. And then we have a question, if the traverse privilege can have a variable depth and specific rel types? And uh, the question is no, or the answer is no and yes. So it cannot have a variable depth. It always is on one node or one relationship. But while all my examples were of nodes, uh, you can also add a relationship type there. And that would then mean that whether you can walk through such a relationship with that relationship type or not. But we don't have anything about like the number of steps between nodes. Very many good questions here, but I think we are kind of out of time. Uh, or at least in a minute. So, uh, Thank you so much for listening. And if anyone have questions later, I'm called Luis.neo on the user Slack if you're in there. So thank you very much.